Hey guys, my name is Mark Skeen. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm working on my E92-335i. Uh, as you can see, I already got the wheels off of it and up on jack stands. So, I do a lot of autocross events. Also occasionally do some track day events. And what I want to do to my car is I want to add a little bit more camber to the front of the car. Well, the cheapest way I found to do it on a budget is to go with a couple of these fixed camber plates. Uh, I got these ones from Turner Motorsports. And let's see how hard it is to install these. All right, guys. So the first thing you want to do is you want to lift the vehicle up in the air. Uh, always put your vehicle on jack stands. That way, you know, we want to be safe and don't want the car to fall on us. And I always like to leave a jack underneath one side or the other. That way, just in case jack stand does fail, I have a little bit of some kind of something there to save the car from falling on me if I'm underneath it. So... Well, for the job, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the wheels. Obviously, I've already done that. And what we're doing with these camber plates is we're going to be removing the strut area at the top, and the camber plate is going to go between the strut, top of the strut and where it mounts right here. So the first thing we gotta do is remove this bolt. It's gonna be a brace because it's covering up that little bolt that I can't reach. Well, luckily for you guys, I've already gone loosened everything up so everything will be nice and quick or at least we hope so and i like to use magnetic trays just because i don't want to lose my bolts Oop. That's not all so the back end of this brace is through this little hole right here. There's a little cover on I've already taken it off and loosened it up. That way that could come over here and I can move this side to side just so I can reach that bolt. So, once we get that loose, we can take these bolts off. All right guys, so now that we got all the bolts gone on the top, we can see that this is pretty loose. I've already gone ahead and removed the sway bar end link here. I did that a little bit earlier. That way when we bring this down, we should be able to swing it all the way out. Let me grab a pry bar here. Get a little bit. All right guys, sorry about that. Uh, apparently I had some spam mail come in, or a spam phone call there uh, asking about my extended warranty of course so what I did right here as I went and I took a pry bar and I pried this down just a little bit just to pull it out the outside I put some rags on top that way I didn't scrape anything but there is a scrape right here but that's actually from when I bought the car that was already there so uh, one of these days I'll fix it all right so the next thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to remove the studs that are here uh, what I like to do is I like to put the nut back on the top that way when I hit it with a hammer, it won't damage the threads, which I've already done. So, but you can see they came out pretty good. They're pretty easy, pretty small. So, but I like to put them on there just in case I need to reuse these studs one day. No, the nut helps protect the threads in case I miss, which I've done. So. All right, so I already started the process of putting this plate on. Uh, the plate comes with these new bolts that are going to go in place of the studs that we removed. So there's three of them and that's just going to go right where the old holes used to go. Just like that. So pretty much all this kit is doing is it's taking my mounting point for where the strut used to mount up and it moves it further inward. Which in turn is giving me a little bit more negative cambers which is what I want. And Turner was nice enough. We can't screw it up. If you can look at it right there, it says right. So make sure we're putting it on the right side. And then we put the other left one on the left side. All right, guys. So I got these all on here. So what I got to do is tighten them all down. Uh, Turner is nice enough to give us a little bit of an install 
PDF. And all we gotta do is tighten these down and the torque spatic on these is 25 foot pounds. And you always wanna torque everything down to the spec. Um, there's some people that just don't torque anything. I'm one of those people that I try to torque as much as I can. Because you never know when I might break it. Or if it's not torqued down enough, then it might come off, especially as a suspension component. Can you imagine this coming off while driving down the road? That, that'd be quite a sight. All right, let's see here. All right, 25 foot pounds. All right guys, so what I've done is I torqued the camber plate down and then I just pried this back in place to where it goes. So as you can see, it's backing up in this little slot. And all we gotta do, we just gotta turn this to the right spot. There, lift up on the strut. Enough to get bolt started. Once you get your first nut started on here, all you gotta do, spin the rest of them on here. Tighten down to your, the torque spec specified in the instructions and do everything in reverse. All right, guys, down to the final couple bolts to do. Make sure I tighten down everything, torque to spec. There we go. All right. All right, guys, so I just finished torquing everything down. I uh, wanted you guys to see like the finished product. You can get a good view here. So, as you can see, the top of the strut is now pushed towards the inside of the vehicle. And with that, what it's going to do is this is going to be further in, which means that the top of everything is going to tilt in a little bit. So, that should give me a little bit more negative camera, which is what I'm looking for. Hey guys, I want to show you the reasoning why I wanted to put more negative camera in the front of my car. So, this right here is my front right tire. So, if, as you're going around a corner, your tire is, say this is the outside tire that's going around a corner, so the tire is going to be pulled inward. So if you take a look here, you can see that the outside edge of my tire is actually being run down past the tread here. And that's what we don't want. We want the contact patch of the tire to stay on the road. Uh, right now, I have the factory settings is much negative camera as I can go, which is only about 1.6 degrees, if I remember correctly. Um, with this camber kit, it's supposed to add an extra 2.5 degrees to that. So I'm probably gonna try to go and get my alignment done and have it set somewhere in the area of about three degrees. All right, so it's been a couple weeks now. I figured it was time for an update since I installed the camber plates. Um, it was quite an easy install. I didn't really think it was too bad. Anybody with some basic hand tools, I think could really do it if they wanted to in their garage within a you know, a weekend project. Well, at least one day anyway. Well, I went down and I got an alignment done on the car. I've actually gone out to the racetrack already. I'll show you guys that in a later video, but I wanted to show you that the camper plates did what I thought they would. And as you can see from the front of the tire here, the top of the tire, is actually sucked right in, tucks right underneath the fender right there, which is what I wanted. Handled a little bit better on the track, a um, lot less understeer, which is what I read in all the forums, so, but it's always nice to see things in person that people actually talk about. There was a couple things I was worried about when installing these on the car. One of them is when you put camper plates on the front of your car, uh, the thickness of the plate is gonna raise up the front of your car that amount of thickness, which this one was six millimeters, so, if you take a look, it honestly isn't too bad. So, from the front to the rear of the car, it's actually fairly even still. Nothing too bad that I'm really worried about. I do plan on putting some coilovers on later, and that'll fix that problem. Now, the other problem that I was worried about is that when you put a little more negative camber in the front of your car, or on any of the on the rear of the car as well whichever one um your tires are going to lean in a little bit more at the top which is going to cause a little bit more tire wear honestly mine isn't that bad so far i've driven it a 
probably about 500 miles and I haven't really noticed anything on the tires. And when we did the alignment, it, we didn't do too much camber in the front. So, but I'll update you guys later on down the road. If it changes or the tires start to wear out a lot more, I'll let you know. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you like what you saw, smash the thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way the next time I post a video, you guys will know. Also, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you like or what you don't like. And also, let me know what you want to see. Who knows? If I get enough people asking for it, I'll post it. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. I'll leave a link down below. Thank you guys. I'll see you next video.